whatever the underlying investments do, however they go up or go down, this is going to go up three times the amount. So you can see this first uh, purchase, I invested $900 um, in, in the fund, and I got a profit of $281. So yeah, nine ninety seven. That's basically a thousand. So two eighty one. That's like twenty eight percent. And that's something I wouldn't necessarily recommend you start off with as a beginner in the stock market. We'll talk about that later in the video. But it's definitely not something I recommend for everyone. Hey guys, Credit Shifu here, and in this video, we're going to be talking how to create a successful stock market portfolio. Uh, I'm going to base this off of the portfolio I have built starting uh, in the year 2016, in the summer of 2016. Um, I had had a stock portfolio before back in uh, coming out of 2008, made quite a good return uh, coming out of the recession. Uh, a lot of, you know, the market was majorly down, there was a lot of cheap stocks to buy. Um, so I made quite a bit of money at that time. Uh, then I went through a few years later on where I was in a big financial difficulty, so I, I basically had to sell my entire portfolio to fund my life for a couple of years and also my collection of guitars and, uh, you know, it was, it was a heartbreaking time. But anyway, um, in the middle of 2016, I was thinking, you know, I'm 30 years old. Let me let's uh, you know start another portfolio. This time, I will never sell it. It's going to be my life savings. Uh, so let's give it a go. Um, so let's jump right into the uh, computer and we'll analyze my portfolio and hopefully give you guys some tips to creating your own portfolio that will be your life savings and uh, you'll be able to live off of the dividends from in the future and fund your life that way and in retirement. Okay, so first of all, we're looking at kind of like my home screen on Charles Schwab. That's the brokerage I use. And uh, this is my account right here. You can see that uh, we started off July 2016, opened the account with $4,000. Uh, and then I've made two uh, large payments into the account here and here. Uh, that's about $1,000 each time. Uh, I think the second one might have been less. Actually, the second one was about 400 But anyway, um, and you can see now the account's uh, coming to around $10,000. Um, it actually includes Baby Credit Shifu's $300 account for her college fund. But, uh, you know, so roughly $10,000. Um, and, you know, I, I like this $10,000 amount. I think it's cool because it's illustrating... Um, you know, with a reasonably small account that the average person uh, who's just starting out uh, could think about, you know, be within their reach. I'm being very open about the amounts of money involved. I think if I was, you know, someone super wealthy and it was a larger account, I wouldn't, you know, be telling people uh, how much uh, money uh, I was earning. With a sub $10,000 account, it's definitely not something that uh, has to really be kept secret for any reason. So um, let's now go to my next screen, which is um, the actual breakdown of all the different components of this account. And so when we're talking about making up a stock portfolio, uh, it's important to have a diversified portfolio, a lot of different stocks and ETFs. Um, so let's have a look at equities. Equities are stocks, shares of companies. And you can see I only own four individual uh, stocks individual companies. So this top one is VTR, uh, Ventas Incorporated Real Estate, um, REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. Uh, so what a real estate investment trust is, that is a company that invests in real estate to then rent out to various companies, um, that sort of thing, uh, companies or individuals. Uh, this one actually invests heavily in sort of uh, medical and care real estate. So they own um, hospitals and old people's homes in the UK, the US and Canada. Uh, and so the logic behind investing in that is that, you know, those three countries do have aging populations. So it's kind of rational to assume that um, there would be more demand in the coming years for old people's homes, etc. Uh, the annual dividend yield is 5.65%. That's quite high. Um, and that's gone up because the total share price has gone down. The dividend, I believe, has stayed the same. Um, and so, you know, this, this stock actually has gone down a little bit since I bought it. Um, that really doesn't bother me. I don't think, you know, obviously that's just an on-paper loss. Um, I think in, you know, in the long run, this, uh, this stock, stock will go up. And so I am reinvesting my dividends into this stock. Next stock we have is GoPro. And this one was a little bit of a bet. Um, so I only encourage people to do uh, this kind of thing with uh, small parts of their uh, portfolio. Uh, so here's one month, and I actually bought GoPro um, off of some bad news that uh, was released. They were cutting 250 jobs from their drone unit. If you know anything about GoPro, they had this drone, the GoPro Karma. They had some technical issues with it. They had to do a recall. But they're still a great action sports company, action sports camera company. Uh, they announced anyway that they 
had uh, cut 250 jobs from their drone unit and their stock price went way down and just fell off a cliff you can see on the screen there bottomed out at 504 um, and then it came back up again I bought the stock um, at about six dollars and it, it went up I didn't didn't sell it immediately but uh, you know I've, I've held it and it's gone down again I think it will be going back up there's talk of a possible uh, buyout for GoPro um, they said that you know they're not in talks for to be bought but they are uh, open to it and normally you know, when company gets bought, the stock, uh, it'll be bought at a slightly higher price. We're talking maybe 7 or $8. Um, so, you know, I'm just basically just holding it. Uh, but I used a very small amount of money in this because it basically was a, was a bet. I only invested $200. Um, so the gain I'll make off it probably will be small. And that also protects me from a large loss. If, if it really doesn't look like it's going up, you know, I've only lost $27 on it so far. So you could just, uh, just sell it and get out. Now the next stock we have on this list is Dine Equity, D-I-N, and uh, this company, they own Applebee's and they own International House of Pancakes. And I bought this stock uh, basically for the dividend. So at the time, the stock was paying a 10% dividend. Um, and that was because basically this, the value of the stock had gone down quite a lot and they were still paying, they hadn't changed their dividend, they hadn't lowered it, so they were still paying the same amount. Um, normally, if a stock has 10% or more dividend, I think you, you need to treat it with care. You need to treat, you know, is there something wrong with this company? They're trying to entice people with a massive dividend. But, uh, you know, they they had this 10% dividend, so I, I used a small amount of money from my portfolio, uh, less than a thousand bucks, and invested in them just, you know, just for the dividend. Let's check it out. Um, but this company has actually grown quite a lot. Um, their last, you know, they had some negative earnings uh, reports a while back. Uh, but actually, you can see on here, you know, the last three earnings reports have been positive. So they've been they've been kind of getting um, getting back into things, and uh, they've increased quite a lot. And I've made over two hundred dollars uh, on this investment, even though I only bought it for the dividend. So you know, that, that's kind of cool. Um, my kind of strategy with this as well was that uh, companies that own these sort of lower end um, restaurants, not super low end like McDonald's or whatever, but places like Applebee's. Um, they tend to do well in times of, uh, you know, financial crisis or recession because people who would normally dine out at more classy restaurants, they are trying to save a bit of money and they, you know, will go somewhere a little bit lower down the market like Applebee's or places like Chili's, like Red Lobster, you know, they're reasonably nice sit down restaurants, but really the food, it's not that good quality. It's quite mass produced, quite standardized and they sell for quite a low price. I got this idea from um, a company in the UK called JD Weatherspoons that actually did really well uh, in the financial crisis of 2008-2009. Let's have a look at the next company uh, in my stock portfolio, and this is RIO, Rio Tinto PLC. It's a UK-based uh, company, headquartered in the UK with mining operations all over the world, especially Australia. And um, at the moment, they take up 18% of my portfolio. It used to be 28%, but I've actually sold off $1,000 worth of their stock uh, quite recently. Um, I had made a very nice return on it. I was up about $700 on a, um, somewhere around a $2,000 investment. Uh, and you can see here, you know, I've made $485 on, on, on paper earnings on what's left. So let's just go in and have a look at this stock. Um, they're a mining company. I really like investing in mining companies and companies that do raw materials uh, just because, you know, in the future, um, people are always going to need to have raw materials, all right? People are always going to build houses, build buildings. Um, they're always going to need metals and all this kind of stuff for industrial production. Um, so I feel like companies like this that produce raw materials are pretty sound investments to hold long term. They also pay a good dividend, 4.20% at the moment. It's gone down a little bit because the stock price has gone up, although perhaps they'll increase their dividend when they announce it. Um, I think they're announcing it pretty soon. And you can see their price to earnings ratio is coming down. There's tax cuts in the US. There's uh, rumor, well, Trump wants to do a trillion dollar infrastructure um, bill, which would you know, fund a lot of building of roads and bridges, which, you know, obviously they're going to buy raw materials for that. So Rio, Rio Tinto, along with other mining companies, would most probably benefit from that, um, you know, stimulus. So, you know, a lot of that might be factored in already, which is why it's risen so much. Um, but, you know, um, the future looks bright for them, basically. So I believe it's a sound investment. However, it was taking up too much of my portfolio at 28%. So I did. Uh, that's why I decided to sell um, some of it. Okay, we're now uh, down to 
the next section, which is ETFs and funds and stuff. And this this makes up 55% of the portfolio, uh, and that's a really you know a good move because ETFs are basically funds that hold a variety of stocks, um, and you want to be diversified to protect you from one particular company or you know having a bad bad year or going bankrupt or whatever. Um, so it's always wise to hold a large portion of your portfolio in ETFs. Now the first one, GDXJ, I'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm going to go through the other ones first because they're a bit more normal. SCHX, uh, let's have a look at that. That is a Charles Schwab large cap um, ETF um, and it basically it tracks the return of uh, large cap stocks. You can see they, they hold Apple, they hold Google, um, you know, Amazon, all these large companies that have had great growth in the last uh, last year or so. And uh, I'm holding those companies through this ETF. It sort of averages out the gains, so I'm not so reliant on any one company. Um, let's have a look at the bottom one now, which is a similar, um, a similar ETF, uh, the Schwab Dividend Equity ETF. And basically, this is tracking returns of the Dow Jones uh, Dividend 100 Index, which is basically you know Dow Jones companies that are paying dividends. Their dividend is a bit higher, 2.63 percent. You can see we're up 166 dollars, um, so that's pretty cool too. Now the next one, DIV, and this is a special one. And uh, you can see this takes up 30 percent of my account. It's the largest individual fund or individual item in my account. Um, and let's talk about why Global X Super Dividend. Um, this ETF basically it pays quite a large dividend, 5.93%, tracking the uh, super, what do we call it, US low volatility index um, stocks that pay dividends. And so basically it pays close to a 6% dividend. And you can see on this chart, this is a three year chart. And what do you notice about this? It's actually paying out its dividend every month. So it's six, uh, close to 6% annually, which means it's 0.5% on a monthly basis. So if you have a thousand dollars invested in it, basically you'll get a five dollar payout per month. So I've got three thousand, so I'm getting fifteen dollars a month uh, paid into my account. Actually, I'm reinvesting everything in this to grow it. Um, so this is a really cool uh, dividend stock, uh, sorry, dividend ETF. If you want to see sort of growth for the small investor, you know, it's really satisfying to see money actually coming into your account every month. You know, you invest $1,000, wow, $5 a month. That's so much better than what you get in any bank account. Let's now have a look at this last one. And this is the Vanek Vectors Junior Goldminders GDXJ um, uh, fund, okay? And this tracks junior gold miners, which are small gold mining companies. They're quite volatile and they're very sensitive to the price of gold. We're looking at the five-year chart here. You can see they had uh, quite a run in 2016. That's because the price of gold went up, and it went up quite a lot. And uh, they paid out a good dividend at that time. Right now, their dividend is tiny. This ETF, it's not really um, something that I'm expecting to earn money off of under normal circumstances. It's more like an insurance. So if there's a big recession, even if there's a smaller correction, or you know the market goes down for some reason, a lot of time, People with a lot of money will run to gold. They'll they'll start investing in gold. They see it as safe. They see it as a, a good store of their wealth. And this often will drive the gold price up. And if the gold price gets driven up, these companies' profits increase dramatically. So basically, this fund, you can see five years ago, 2013, where the gold price was higher than it is now, the stock, um, sorry, the ETF price for one share was at $76. Right now, it's about $35. So it, it had more than halved in value. But that doesn't mean it won't go up again because we haven't had, you know, any serious sort of um, recession since uh, 2008, 2009. If you look further back, I can't, I can't show it to you on this graph. But if you look further back, the price was even higher. So it's basically an insurance. And then the strategy is, once the uh, the stock market goes down, the price of GDXJ or other uh, stocks and ETFs connected to the price of gold will go up dramatically. You can then sell it and use that money to buy in to shares while they're cheap. That's kind of the uh, strategy. Um, it's an insurance. I wouldn't put more than 10% of your um, overall account into something like this. Now you can just have a look at my cash uh, in the account now. We're at about 7% cash, around $700. Um, and this I'm saving as cash. I'm probably gonna increase it to around 10 to hopefully maybe 10 or even 15% by the end of the year. And just the reason for that is the market is very high at the moment, uh, 26 and a half thousand. 
it'll probably go up to the end of the year. I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw 30,000 by the end of the year. Um, but you know, what goes up must come down. And so the idea of keeping a proportion of your account in cash uh, is just preparing for when it does finally come down, you're in a good position to buy a load of stocks. So I will steadily be increasing the amount of cash I hold throughout the year um, going forward. Just lastly, guys, I want to show you something that is kind of risky behavior, what I talked about at the beginning of the video. I wouldn't really recommend this for most people, and I certainly wouldn't recommend using any large part of your account to do this. I would say keep it below 10% of your account that you do this with. But it's what we call sort of swing trading and also day trading. Um, you can see on this chart, this, this table, these are funds that I've bought. Um, the bottom one, URTY, that's a Russell 2000 triple leveraged fund. So basically, they use like borrowing and or margin or whatever. It's kind of like margin trading, not not quite the same, but because it's the fund that's borrowing the money, not you. You just invest in the fund. But um, they use certain methods to triple the gains on a daily basis. So if, if a f underlying investments go up 10%, your, your money invested in that fund will go up 30%. And so you can see at the bottom, I've done this with this uh, ProShares uh, Russell 2000 fund. And then going up, we've got uh, Lockheed Martin. That was sort of a one-off swing trade that I did, which basically there was some negative information about Lockheed Martin. Trump tweeted out, like that the F-35 was too expensive and their stock price went down. Um, I bought it. I held it for a couple of months, or maybe a month or two, and, uh, you know, it went back up. I got $72 return, so it, it had increased around 7%. And then we have a lot of buying and selling of JNUG. Um, and this is, JNUG is a very popular, um, you know, fund. It's, it's kind of like a casino. It's kind of like gambling. It's also a fund that's based on the price of gold. And this fund actually buys GDXJ as one of its underlying investments. And it's also a triple leverage fund. So whatever the underlying investments do, however they go up or go down, this is going to go up three times the amount. So you can see this first uh, purchase. I invested $900 um, in, in the fund and I got a profit of $281. So yeah, $997, that's basically 1000 So $281, that's like 28% uh, profit. Um, that's pretty good, right? <clears throat> then the next one, we've got $83 off of 1,000, so it's like an 8% profit. Um, then the next one up, we have a loss of $100. So you can see in that one, I invested $442, um, and the fund went down, didn't look like it was gonna be going up, so I just chose to cut my losses, and I pulled out, losing $100. Now, you might think that's terrible, but if you look at the previous two uh, profits, 281 and 83, uh, we're somewhere near $400, so that would be a $300 uh, profit if you average it out. And then you can see I'm going in $108 profit, $63 profit. Um, going further up, you know, we have a few losses. Well, three losses actually, uh, but only small losses. You can see overall with that, I've been pretty successful, but day trading and swing trading is definitely something that you need a bit of experience to be able to do. Um, let's just have a look at JNUG actually. You can see that's the one month chart for JNUG. And um, you can see how it swings, you know, up and down, You're down at $16 uh, on the 9th of January, up at $20.50 $20 around the 25th of January. So it really, you know, it really swings around if you buy it low, sell it high. But you know, you how do you know when it's gonna be low and high? You can look at sort of the averages of past returns, but you can't predict the future. So a lot of it's luck. Um, I would advise if you do want to do this kind of trading, don't use more than 10% of your account to do it. So if it's a $10,000 account, don't use more than $1,000. That's always been my rule. Um, and cut your losses early. Like if it goes down um, and you've lost, say, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, just get out, you know? And then wait till it goes low, buy it again at the bottom or what you think is the bottom, and hopefully. It'll go up, and if it goes up, just hold on to it. Look at it throughout the day, um, and maybe you'll make a, a profit of fifty to hundred bucks, you know, and that'll cancel out that twenty buck uh, loss. But like I said, this is really not something for beginners. Um, I don't really do it. I haven't really been doing this this year because I've been focusing more on buy and hold uh, because the Trump rally, you know, has just been going so great. I don't feel the need to do it. It's in more in times of volatility when the market's not doing well. You can kind of use these methods to get a bit of extra returns, but in the long run, you don't make more money doing this. So it all averages out. Um, so it's not something I recommend uh, for beginners at all. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope that's given you a few tips uh, to creating your portfolio. 
As always, just remember that I'm not a qualified financial advisor, so don't do any of this just because I say so. Take these as ideas, uh, read other books. I can recommend Unshakable by Tony Robbins. That's great if you wanna do sort of a buy and hold investing, especially with ETFs, just sort of a very safe approach. Um, the Intelligent Investor uh, is sort of the, the kind of industry gold standard that everyone interested in investing should read. Um, that also details a sort of safe approach and a little bit more of a um, active approach um, to investing uh, is in that book. Basically everything about investing is in that book. So um, I'll put the links to both those books on Amazon below. You can check them out. I also have video uh, reviews of those books I'll put on the end card of this video as well. Um, so thanks so much for watching guys and good luck if you're thinking of creating your own portfolio. Uh, let's see a year of good returns in 2018. Bye-bye.